Welcome to Marketing Made Simple TV. I'm Jeff Ogden, the host of the show, and we're thrilled to have you back once again for another great show. And we've got a great guest for you. Content marketing is so important today, especially with Google humming, uh, uh, Google's Hummingbird update. The traditional search marketing doesn't work. So it's all about creating great content. And I've got the world's top expert, Joe Paluzzi, on the show. So let's meet Joe. Glad to be here, Jeff. How are you doing? I'm good. Glad to have you on the show. And I want to congratulate you on this book, um, Epic Content Marketing, How to Tell a Different Story, Break Through the Clutter, and Win More Customers by Bar Marketing Less. Great new book. Thank you, sir. Really appreciate it. It's a, as you read through, it's a group effort. Lots of smart people in that book. So, I'm, I, you know, I'm glad we could put it together. Yeah, I guess you're not the only smart person that wrote it. So, <laughs> I'm one of the smaller ones yeah, in that book. You know, so I'm going to toss you the question we ask every guest, Guy Kawasaki, Daniel Pank, etc., is the very simple question is, who are you and what do you do? Well, Jeff, thanks again for having me. My name is Joe Polizzi. I'm the founder of the Content Marketing Institute. Uh, CMI runs the largest event in the world on content marketing called Content Marketing World. We do a lots of other cool stuff, but you can check that out later. Uh, as you noted, uh, my third book uh, is Epic Content Marketing. This is my first solo effort, and I travel around the world talking, about, talking to uh, brand marketers about how they can use content marketing to attract and retain customers, and I'm loving every minute of it. Pretty interesting, Joe. I got to ask you for a, a, a question about something you wrote in the subtitle that you can actually win more customers by marketing less. I think that's just such a provocative statement. Explain the idea behind that. You know, it's funny, Jeff. We we spent a lot of time on the subtitle with this one, and that was a key point that I wanted to keep in because I think when you talk to most marketers, they feel like if they get more of their product and service information out, they will actually sell more stuff. Whether if they, you know, if we had the, the glory of having a bigger budget and we actually make the case against that and say, you know what, if you talk less about your products and services and talk more about solving the informational needs of your customers, that's where the benefits are today. Especially, we, you, you mentioned Google's Hummingbird update, especially with that. I mean, we're talking about shareable, inspirational, truly in, informational content. And if you don't have any one of those core ingredients, you're not. it's not going to be shared. It's not going to be found. You're not going to get your brand out there. And especially today, Jeff, you, consumers are in control of the buying process. We know that. So if you talk more about yourself, that content's not going to be shared. So we actually want to market less in a traditional standpoint to get our message found more, and that's through content marketing. Interesting, Joe, and I think you're right. People got to create great content that, that people want to share. Give us a little bit of the, since you're out there talking to brands and everyone about content, what would you say is the state of content marketing today? Is it everybody's doing it and few people are good at it? I mean, what is, what's going on in the world of content marketing, Joe? Well, that's probably the biggest setup question ever. Uh, so here's, here's my take on it, Jeff. Everybody, yes, according to our research, um, we've done, CMI has done research with Marketing Pros for the last four years. We know that over 90% of companies are doing some form of content marketing, whether they realize it's content marketing or not. At the same time, we know that the majority of those marketers have no documented content strategy. So you want to wonder why we've got so much horrible content and noise out there. It's because we, for the most part, brand marketers don't know where the ship is going. We've, I think we've fallen in love with channels like Facebook and Twitter and LinkedIn and our blogs. And we've forgotten that, no, we really do need a plan. We really do need a strategy. So if you were to ask me where the industry of content marketing is sort of from an evolutionary standpoint, Jeff, I would say that even though this industry, as you and I have talked about, is over 100 years old, we are just at maybe the very end of early adoption phase when it comes to looking at process improvement and really integrating the art and science of the content marketing approach in our companies. They're very, very early in this process. So it's really good. There's a fantastic opportunity. 
if you're listening to this and you haven't gotten on board, you're not too late. But we've got a lot of content going on all over the place. It is a noisy mess. And I really believe that if we set up processes and truly integrate this approach into organizations, you can stand out from the rest of your competition. And, and now is the time to do that. That's good news for the people watching this, that it's not too late to start. Uh, very good news, Joe. Let's talk a little bit about the need to really know your buyers. I know it's one thing you talk about in the book, and, and the whole Adele Ravella, we both know her, and we talk about buyer personas. Why is it so important to really know your bu buyers, and what is a buyer persona anyway? Well, you mentioned Adele Ravella. She's probably the foremost expert in the world on buyer personas. So a lot of the, the, the chapter on buyer personas in the book is covered by Adele, thankfully, because she's much more of an expert on it than I am. I'm going to make it very simple for anyone listening to this. I know the majority of marketers either have never done a buyer persona or they have a buyer persona done and they put it in a drawer or they put it in a file and never done anything with it. I'm going to make it specific for content creation. What happens is when you do a content brief or you have people in your organization, you have agencies, freelancers doing content, most of the time we're given a very short brief and we're given a couple keywords and then we're saying run, create content, produce great content, and we're not given any direction because what we need is that buyer persona in front of us. And, and the definition of that, the easy way to put a buyer persona is it's the who you're trying to have a conversation with. This is the who you're marketing. This is your audience. And there's a lot of different technicalities involved in it, but what I like to say is you need an 8.5 by 11 sheet of paper, needs to have a picture of what your, uh, what your buyer would look like, and who is this? Is this, is this a working mom? Is she busy? Uh, is, is it a, is it a uh, plant manager? And what, what does this plant manager do after work? What are their informational pain points? What keeps them up at night? Just so the content creators can have some idea of who they're trying to talk to. And I see it over and over again, Jeff, where we have content created and we're, we're actually creating content to a keyword in a lot of organizations and they really have no idea who they're talking to or what, this is a really important part, Jeff, what the outcome should be for that buyer. What do you, what do you, are, they, are we trying to help them with their jobs in some way? Are we trying to help them with their lives? Most of the time we think of, oh, we want them to get uh, to buy more of our products and services. That's not a good content marketing outcome. So we've got to figure those things out. It doesn't take very long and you absolutely have to talk to actual customers to get this done the right way if you talk to Adele Ravella. It's interesting, Joe, because you, you, everyone talks about you got to create great content today. You got to create shareable content. Well, who defines great content? Your customers do, right? <laughs> it's like you, content isn't great because you say it is. It's great because the people who consume your content say it is. Talk to us a little bit about that concept. So, Jeff, if you were to say what's the difference between content and content marketing, uh, content is the stuff that we're creating that really isn't doing anything for our business. Content marketing is the stuff that actually, it has to actually enhance or change some kind of a behavior. It has to do something. So if I'm to look at what really is, what's, what's epic content, it's actually our customers are doing something with it. They're sharing it, they're talking about it, they're making uh, behavior changes, they're going online, they're doing something, they're downloading this, they're, they're taking action. So are your customers taking action around your content? And simple enough, I mean, most most content marketing programs at an infancy level that I see, Jeff, are built not on objectives, but on metrics. So they'll say, oh, I want more likes, more followers, more web traffic. Folks, those are metrics. You can't build a content marketing program around that. We want objectives. So those objectives and our return on those objectives need to be, is it driving sales in some way? Is it lowering costs or some, in some way? And is it creating happier customers? What we need to measure, those, that movement of the customer needs to flow into one of those three key overall objectives, whether that's keeping my customers longer, I'm keeping them happier, they're buying more, uh, what's the difference between my subscribers and the people that don't subscribe to my content, how are those behaviors different, those are the things that I'm looking for. And unfortunately, Jeff, I think we're measuring too much on a lower, I call them user indicators or secondary indicators, 
but not the primary indicators of is this content actually changing behavior in some way. Interesting. Defining content as changing behavior. I like that, Joe. Let's just talk about where content marketing is used because you think about in lead nurturing, you got to share valuable content. Um, in pay-per-click ads, you got to have con where does content uh, fit in B two B? I, it's a great question, Jeff. First of all, I'm going to give the disclaimer that there's no silver bullet to this. I've been involved in over 200 different content strategies, and every one of them has been different. So it really depends on what you're trying. But I think the key thing for anybody listening to this is this is not a check the box type of thing. It's not, oh, I need a, a content marketing manager. They're going to take care of it. Check the box done with content marketing. Content marketing is an approach and it can be involved in everything you're doing from a marketing standpoint. I think it can make your PR better. Uh, you can actually be telling stories and tell, instead of your dry releases. I think it can make your lead nurturing, lead generation better. So instead of talking more about get them involved in a demo, uh, does it make sense to get them into let's download this really educational ebook or white paper, then do a follow up ongoing with a with a webinar, then get them involved in this let's say podcast series, where maybe it takes a little bit longer. Oh, God forbid, it takes them a little bit longer to become a qualified lead, but they're a smarter customer. We're creating better customers along the line, and I love that. Robert Rose, our chief strategist. The Content Marketing Institute uses that all the time. We want to create better customers with our content. Of course, you talked about SEO. I mean, how can we be everywhere where our customers are at online and they're looking for information on how to be smarter about how to make a decision specifically in B2B? How are we there with our educational content? And I'll just end with this, Jeff, because I think it's most, the most important thing and I think most B2B companies forget this. What is your subscription strategy? I see so much in B2B where they'll say, okay, I want to get the leads in. I'm going to take the leads. I'm going to dump them off the sales, and I'm just churning out those leads, um, which is fine. I mean, I totally get that. There's so much pressure on marketing to, to drive qualified leads to sales. But what is your on, what if you had to con continue that communication with those leads that you got in, and you never stopped that, and you just evolved that communication and that conversation? I think that's what a subscription strategy does, with, like, let's say like an email subscription strategy. What is your content that you deliver every Monday or every day or every last Friday of the month that's so inspirational, integral to their lives? You become the go-to resource. And then you really look at how are my subscribers different than my non-subscribers? Are they staying longer? Are they better customers in some way? I would love to see more B2B companies take a serious look at that and integrate that throughout everything we're doing from a content standpoint. I like that line, Joe, create better customers. Outstanding. And I'd love to chat with you longer, but we're running low on time. So let's talk a little bit about your book, your new book. Um, where do people find your book? Where do they learn about the Content Marketing Institute? And how do they get in touch with you, Joe? Thanks, Jeff. You know, we've got Ep everything uh, Epic Content Marketing is on epiccontentmarketing.com. It's where you can get it. Uh, we've got eight or nine locations you can get it at. Uh, there's a free chapter, a couple free downloads there. So if you, you're a little bit wary, you're not sure if you want to buy it, lots of free stuff to hopefully get you hooked into to taking a buy of that. Everything for Content Marketing Institute and our event content marketing world you can find on uh, contentmarketinginstitute.com. And that research that we talked about, Jeff, that's all on there in our research section. It's all free. It's all ungated. So I, I just would hope people can check that out when they get a chance. I want to thank Joe for being a great guest on the show. Go to epiccontentmarketing.com to get all this great, free, ungated content. We have the link right here, which you can just click on at any point and go to it. I urge you to pick up this book, Epic Content Marketing, and read it. How to develop, how to tell a different story, break through the clutter, and, and win more customers by marketing less. Terrific book. Before we go, we want to thank our sponsors. Avitage is a great content marketing company. You should check them out, avitage.com. Digital Ethos is an educational 
software uh, uh, website, digitalethos.org, communication strategy group, brand telling, um, PR, really good company, um, Social Ribbit, they're not on the screen, but socialribbit.com, R-I-B-B-I-T, and at the end you see it's powered by Watch It so we always want to thank our the platform that provides this TV on the web show. It's very much a TV show, it's not a web show. Marketing Made Simple TV premieres every Thursday at noon Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific. So until next time, we'll see you again on Marketing Made Simple TV.